these boards are making up the panel that I'll use for the carving. It'll be a pierced carving of a heron. And this wood is maple. Uh, maple's very hard to work with. But it's like the difference of, say, leather and pleather. Maple is a higher quality. Here we go. We just laid it out, stenciled it on the board. I like to use the router. It just makes a more precision cut. Uh, the reason I'm using the jigsaw there is because, as you can see, my router didn't quite go through the wood. In this case here right now, I would have liked to have routed it right through, but it was about a quarter inch that I couldn't get. So I had to get the jigsaw out and knock out those pieces. That's why they call it a pierce carving. I'm piercing right through the carving. After I get it pierced out, I'll just knock out the general shape of the carving. Carving like this is fun to do. It goes quite fast. Even though this maple is really hard to cut. I'm not sure that I'll make one out of maple again. I'm just laying out uh, some more detail. And this is actually a waste of time because as I shape that out, I'll lose all those lines. I do have a habit of overdrawing things, but what's a little more time just gives me a better view of what the overall picture is going to be like. Now here I'm basically just cutting in areas that are going to be in different levels. And here I get to get my chainsaw out. I guess you wouldn't really call it a chainsaw carving, but there's a little chainsaw work there. It's not like I'm going to take it outside and turn the gas powered chainsaw on. You notice how all of a sudden that circle frame on that thing has all of a sudden become smaller. I took it somewhere else and knocked that wood off. And also you'll see above the head there, there's that brown streak on the wood. I do cut that off and I glue another piece of wood on there. You'll, sh you'll see the fix that I do there. I don't mind there being little repair jobs in the carving. It just so shows the procedure of carving a little better. Because quite often you'll run into something that needs to be fixed. Something might go wrong. And there's always a way to fix something. Well, you should be good enough that there... I should say you will get good to the point that rarely will you have to fix something. Just about getting this shape down. A little more chainsaw, bring up the shape. As you can see, I've sanded off where I've chainsawed there so that I can stencil all the detail into that. It's kind of rough with the chainsaw. There we go, we're stenciling the final detail. That'll be the last time I need to draw on that carving. And these lines will stay there until I get them all carved out. Not like the last ones where I uh, carved right over them. Okay, we'll just detail out these lines a bit. That blemish uh, that I'm going to repair, that shouldn't have been there. I, I should have picked the wood and I didn't think that would show up. Uh, 
There's the fix-it job. No problem. Make it look like nothing was ever wrong with that. I got a brother-in-law that lives over in Oak Bay. It's the southern part of Vancouver Island. And they have a koi pond in their, in their backyard and they have a real problem with these herons coming and scooping the fish. Uh, normally they, the birds just, they live and hang out on the waterfront where there's you know, rocks and dead trees and tall grass. They camouflage in. And there's shallows where they can catch minnows. They'll be out wading around in the water and in the tall grass. And it looks like there's, the, when they're out in their environment, they look like just a piece of wood, driftwood or something, maybe a dead tree, a small dead tree coming out of the ground or something like that, because they move very slowly. Uh, with great patience. They just stand there and advance on their prey very, very slowly. It fools the prey because they think it's just something else that's hanging around. It's just a piece of wood or something like that, but really it's this live bird that's gonna pounce on them and eat them for breakfast. Even their predators are deceived by their actions of moving so slowly and blending in with their environment. I think a lot of predators uh, chase their prey because their prey is in motion, is in movement, and that's what attracts a, a predator to taking after something. Whatever that heron may be hunting, it's likely to be completely oblivious to its presence because of its slow motion moving. Little do they know, but they're gonna be the heron's dinner. And when they snap at their victim, it's, it's with lightning speed. I think life on the waterfront there gets a little boring for them sometimes. So they decide to take to the air and go to town. Take in some city life. Now it ain't coffee shops they're looking for, it's fish ponds and nice backyards. My sister and brother-in-law take a lot of pride in keeping their backyard really beautiful. And those herons like that too, obvious. Every now and then they'll see one of them big birds sneaking across their yard, uh, going for their koi pond. They don't usually see them though. Uh, usually the only sign that the heron's been there is there's a few less koi in the pond. And if they do see one uh, with a fish in his mouth, that heron will just turn around and look right at him and almost to say is, I just beat you and thanks for the fish. And it'll take off. As you can see, I'm closing in on the finished carving. I put a bunch of undercutting in there. Just makes the bird pop. You don't want to show a great big thick wing. So it's undercut to the point where it really doesn't look like it's a big heavy chunk of wood. That's a great thing about these Paris carvings. You can get in and you can work from both sides. I also like, as you can see, I'm putting a little dark stain on the inside of the carving. I like to do that because it just allows the uh, the bird to pop out of the frame a little more.
Yeah, go in into the hard to get at places with a finer paintbrush. Put some Danish oil on. It's a, it's an oak finish. I'll put it right across the whole carving. Just makes the cut lines pop a little more. And preserves. Preserves the wood. You have to, what you do to one side of the carving, you should do to the other side because if it's not treated on one side and draws moisture on the one side, you could get warping. What I just did there, I lifted off, after the stain was dry, I lifted it off. Just to hi highlight the bird a little better, I'm, I carved in my signature there, and this is the hanger. I'll clean it all up, and that's just a clear, just a clear oil that I put on both sides. I'll let that dry. It should be pretty well done. And there it is hanging on the wall. So thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe.